Oh, he's getting it now. Hey everyone, welcome back to Heavy Metal Custom. Of course, we're back on the 68 Mustang project. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks, but we finally got some of our parts in. We got the firewall, the complete floor pan for the front, the trunk pan, and what's the technical term for that other piece? The hump? Like there at the trunk. Sure. Yeah, that piece. Yeah, that's highly tech. But we got them. And Casey just got back from uh, Whitmer's up the road and got us all of our steel that we need. So the first thing we're going to do is work on getting this uh, frame connectors made up and welded in before we cut anything. We want to hold this car nice and steady and level. So let's get in there to grab a plasma cutter. We've got to cut out some of the firewall so that we can see our uh, actual front frame support and get that cleaned up and get it ready for our metal. Well, we got that stuff cut out of the way. Now that passenger side over there, that front frame assembly, is outstanding. But our driver's side, the outside part of it's fine, or the inside part. The outside part, y'all can see that? Yeah, I know you can. That's ugly. We're going to have to uh, make us a piece and repair that as we go along. So, let's go ahead and get all this bad, ugly cut out. And then we'll get to repairing that and then get our uh, framework laid in. All right, guys, we finally got all that out of there. Yeah, like I said, this side's looking good. Got a little bit of uh, work to do with the grinder, but that's okay. Uh, braced it right here, worried about them moving. Now, the other side, I had to cut a lot more out. There's that rust that I was showing y'all earlier in that frame section. That's gone. You see how that's bubbled up? Yeah, that wouldn't have lasted. So, Let's run over here. We're running. We're running. Are you running, Casey? Yeah. No, Casey's not running. See how we cut that out. So what we're fixing to do, Casey's making a cardboard template right now. We're going to bend us a new piece and get all that fixed up and weld it in. We'll show you how we do that. All right. Y'all see what Casey's doing? Taking a piece of cardboard. Leave it in there. Come back just a little bit, Casey. Perfect. Perfect. Flat up against it. No, I got to You're good. I got to cut yeah. this angle. That's level. Here. You want me to grab your pen so you can mark? You just like using the razor knife, don't you? Yeah, I do. I also like getting my hair out in the car. Yeah, you know, they say that's what he's doing. He's taking a knife, running across the back. And then he's going to take it and run it up here at this angle. And that'll tell us where our angle is. Then we'll transfer this to a piece of metal, and I'll show you how to do it. All right, what we've done was transfer that to a piece of metal. Took the plasma cutter, cut it out, hit it with the grinder. Beautiful. And I have my marks here and my mark here. That's where I'll be bending it. Okay, this is going to sit in here, so it needs to be bent inwards. So, we got marks on the wrong side. You mark them. That way, another right. Well, in case you mark them, that way we know that they're close. I can read the tape measure, you know. No, it's going to be crooked. No. There you go. Huh? Where are you going? I ain't done with that. Right, Ben. I don't know. What's wrong? I was going to give you a straight line all the way across. 
желательно не педали. Definitely want to put some hand up on this thing. All right, let's test fit. Let me show you all this here. Come with me. Look at that. Just look at that. That is a pretty good fit. So we'll have to tap her in a little bit. We've got a gap here. Why, I don't know. Oh, now we ain't got no gap. How's that looking? This right here holds it down and makes it go stupid, don't it? A little bit, yeah. All right. We might have to take a hammer and adjust that. But... We'll adjust that and get this stuff cleaned up and get that piece welded in. Well, we got this uh, frame repair done and welded in. Didn't turn out too bad at all. In case you got everything else cleaned up and ground down. Pretty strong. Yeah, I got a tag there, ain't I? It happens. This side's ready to rock, so we're ready to set our square tubing in here almost and see how it fits. We have to put a half inch spacer in here because these are two by two and a half. So we're going to put a half inch spacer up here, which in case you already fixed up out of two quarter inch uh, pieces there. That'll work out just fine and get us the correct height for our two by two tubing. All right, guys. Let me show you where we're at now. We're doing the basically the frame connectors, as you can see. It's some two by two square tubing. We go eight and a half inches up into that front. And you see we bend it over 20, 20 degrees. And then bend it up for what, like two degrees? Yeah. Yeah, something like that in order for it to, it will conform up to here when it's pushed up. Though floorboard's got it pushed down a little bit. We'll show you how we do it in these bends using our tubing bender on this other side when we get there. But for now, we're going to get this side finished first. And what we need to do here, we're going to come here and cut us a 45 and plate it in where it looks nice and trash can't get up in it. We'll clean up all of this so we can get a good weld to it. All right, guys. Here's, backwards. Here's how we do the tubing. Watch backwards. I think you marked backwards. No. Because we need to kick out and back in, right? Yeah, so you did it backwards. The marks would have been here, this would have been your bend point. This no. would just go against your dies. I like my marks to lay right in the center. Okay, fine, fine. fine. Alright, y'all. You know, we have a 2x2 two two and these square two. We're using two and a half inch round dies. Let me show you how that works. Recheck. So that we're done 20 20. Uh, flipped it upside down, put it on the other side, and it doesn't quite fit. A lot of cars, the frames are offset from one another. Yeah, Okay. 
that could take fifteen. So that's why it's always good to recheck and rethink. Alright, so fifteen, fifteen. Where's fifteen? bad thing about doing this like that, y'all can see it leaves it with humps in there. Well, that's easy enough. Check this out. Put your eyes drilled. Mash your humps right out of there. There you go. I'm saying, why don't we get the square dies? Because, instead of square dies, would cost a fortune for this machine. And we're not rich. Besides, this works out fine. ready to go. Casey's going to come back here and grind all this to get it cleaned up. Then we're going to use some, uh, what do they call it, paintable primer. Yeah, that'll be the first time I've used this. So we're going to get all that covered and get it all down in there so that we can 
you know, do our best to help this thing not rust out in the future. 7008 Master Pro Well Through Primer. That's what we're going to attempt to use. I've never used this stuff, so I don't know we're going to get. Of course, this section here will be welded up, so we definitely want to get something on it. Looks primer-ish, I reckon. Okay. Then our square tube that goes up in there. Go ahead and coat the entire top of it, too. Just a nice, solid, one solid coat all the way across the top, because we got to put the floor pan to it. I'll buy that for a dollar. Alright. Oh, we'll be hired to collect here in about 30 <laughs> minutes. Alright, I'll get that other one over there. It's also right here where Casey done all that grinding. We want to get that. Don't forget to shoot through the front frame as well. Forget the what? You want to shoot welding or etching primer into the front of it? Oh, uh, welding primer up in there too. Because if I use vacuum primer up in there, you won't be able to weld. It all just <laughs> melt away. More than likely. Alright, now up here in our boxes. It looks like I might be wasting, but I'm not. He most definitely is. <coughs> As he's choking on it. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to get it all down in there good. You want to do the best that you can do so you don't have no future rust issues on any vehicle that you're doing. Alright. We'll see how this stuff welds here in a little bit. Whatever the dry time is on that, right? Pretty much, yeah. Okay. I'm going to paint that other rail and uh, then we'll let it dry and we'll just see how it works. Alright, got the frame rails. Almost welded in all the way. Gonna wait to get the rear end out to finish that weld there and to get our little end caps on. But I got this whole bead here on the end, inside. That turned out very well. Go up here as you can see. The welder was my friend today. All that burn in very well. Looks really, really good in my opinion. That's going to be very strong. Now we've got these little squares that we made up here. That's the same 2x2 two two tubing. They will go up in here and sit back in there and then be welded in there for extra support. And like I say, we'll get the rest of this welded up. I missed that line there. I'll catch it in a minute. In our end caps and that'll have that. We've got to let the uh, well through primer dry on these. And guys, that well through primer I showed you, I had no issues with it. It was just like reg regular metal that I was welding on. As you can tell, it didn't mess up none at all. So, yeah, good stuff. All right, well, we'll let this dry. We'll get them in and get it all welded up, and then we'll move on. All right, guys, frame connectors are done. Got the rear end out of the way. We have the vehicle now sitting level. We've got our ends in there. Yeah, I sprayed a little uh, etching primer on there. Let stuff run like you're trying to shoot water at it. But both sides turned out good. We've got our square tubing in there, as you can see. That just added a lot of strength for that. Now, what's next, Casey? I'm going to start ripping the fire. Okay, now it's time to uh, R and R the firewall. Yeah. Let's do it. So you see, in Casey with the plasma cutter, what we're doing here is we're going to cut the firewall out with the plasma cutter right quick. Then we'll go back and get all these holes here to get the rest of it out. But we want to get the chunk of it out of the way. It's easier for us to get in there and work. 
So, it is what it is. Very cut. guys we got that firewall out and then we went in there and started cleaning up and uh yeah we got some bad news this out here is two pieces you have the top and you have the under and when we was running the wire brush across here y'all see how rusted that is it's gone that is not repairable and other side's pretty much the same way. So, I gotta get online, try to find one of these, and might as well find one of these if it's not too expensive, because, with some more cleaning up, we found out that the top of this one is mostly Bondo. Yes. Thing that <coughs> when it was wrecked and hit, it's got a rust hole in there, and all of this was patched up underneath that piece that we took off so yeah and we don't need bondo on a piece like that when we're doing such a fine car so we're just going to get in there and get to work try to get all of this taken out but first we're going to run as a brace from here to the other side where this doesn't move on us uh i think just a brace across to do it what do you think casey i think so yeah well, i mean it's we got our jack sitting underneath the front here, so if it does try to come down and meet those jacks, it can't go nowhere. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, we added some jacks there for a little bit of extra holding. But yeah, we're going to get to it and get that piece cut out. We've got to get all that fixed before we put the firewall in. Well, people, that's, uh, that's what you run across when you're working on these old cars. Part of it. All right, guys, get all that cut out. Now, the point we're at right now, what we've done is... First of all, we leveled up the cars. You can see we're leveled there and we're leveled there. So everything's level like it's supposed to be. Get this piece of metal running under here. Yes, it is welded to the frame rails. That way the frame rails can't move in and out as we cut the car apart and that's been leveled as well. So now, what you reckon? Time to just start cutting the body apart and get rid of everything? All right, time to cut the body apart because we've got to save them rear frame rails and get them worked and all cleaned up so they're reusable. We've got the cow outer and inner already ordered and on the way. Uh, the customer said that he's on the way so that we can get all of our conversion parts for this, basically the body, from firewall back. Oh, and key thing about this, guys, when you make these cuts to separate your body, try to save the good stuff. Like the roof, we're going to cut low on the A pillars. So that way you can actually reuse the roof on a later car if somebody don't have the money for a brand new roof. Yep, that is true. Yeah, this roof, I mean, it's bad, but if somebody's throwing together a beater, it'd be great, just like these quarters. We're going to cut this stuff out where we set it to the side. And like Casey said, somebody use it for a beater, or if you just can't find the part, Having a decent piece of metal is better than having no metal. All right, uh, Casey. Hello. Before we cut this apart. Oh, come on. I know, I know. What do you think about my idea of setting the uh, firewall in to get us a center point and the measurement of all of our parts? Just put a couple of sheet metal screws in there to hold it. Sure. Okay. Okay. We're going to do that. Right, guys, here's our uh, firewall with the weld through primer. Uh, got this from. Kentucky did we Mustangs. actually get instructions? No, it's a receipt. Oh, okay, we got it from Kentucky Mustangs, which we're getting. Uh, majority of our parts we are going to get from them. Uh, they seem to have a lot of stuff, and I mean they're just one state away. This order from California, late in two weeks, is just uh, not chilling with me. All right, Casey, what do you got there? Any extra parts or just that? Just it. Okay, just that. 
All right, well, let me put the camera down and help Casey put this into place. screws in it letting it be, but no, it don't come where we think it should be. This car has been wrecked once that we know of pretty good over on this side. Now, has it been wrecked more than that? Come on, it's a 68 and it's a Mustang. I guarantee you it has. It's got a ton of Bondo, it's got a bunch of welds in it, and we've measured this car every which way but loose. And this car is crooked. And, uh, I mean, we have these modifications on the frame rails to try to get all that straightened off. So as far as trying to line up anything with these old body parts, nah, I think we'll just be wasting our time. But, uh, yeah, we're going to start cutting. You saw us all in plasma, or? I'll let you on the driver's side with some plasma, and I'm going to take a saw and we'll see who finishes first. Yeah, I'm going to have Yeah, I can get through some of it with the plasma. Um, I don't think you can get through any of the plasma. The plasma is great for getting the subfloor out, but not these. I think most of this the outside is going to be a uh, salt cell job. Yep, you got long blades? Nope. It'll go that maybe. Cut your original cut, your lower one. Cut through a weld. That's going to take ages. Cut through anything you want. start cutting this car up.
this is the point that we're at. We got everything stripped. Everything's cleaned up. We have our weld through primer on. I'll do a little bit of a frame repair here. It wasn't that big of a deal. There's some little uh, rips down there, if y'all can see that. But I figured I'd just make a nice patch for it. And where we cut this off, I just went ahead and ordered these frame rail pieces for the rear here. Because they was uh, like less than $80 for both sides. So that ain't bad. These torque boxes are in great shape. We're tickled with that. And we went ahead and took these front aprons off because we ordered two new ones. That'll help us line everything up. Now we just ordered uh, pretty much all the other parts that we need for this thing. But what we're going to do now is a little bit of test fitting. In case we just pulled out the trunk and transition pan. Yeah, whatever kind of terminology that is. So we're going to set it into place. We're also going to grab our complete floor pan. And uh, we have our firewall. And cow. Oh yeah, we have our two-piece cow section that came in yesterday. So let me set the camera over here on the stand and let's check all this stuff out, y'all. Move the tabs just to shade or tap it in there. See, this is the trans transition pan. And then you can fight that one in in a second. Yeah, but the frame's not like ungodly warped out. All right, that's correct. Maybe these holes were just drilled wrong. All right, well, let's let it down and grab a. Uh, you want to grab the floor pan next? Got that trimmed out to where it fit down in there. And yes, once we trimmed it with the plasma, took the grinder, cleaned it up, and put some more of the uh, well through primer on it. Now we're going to set the floor pan in place. So you going to let the lift down some? I mean, if you want, we can take it and set it on top of it and then carry it the rest of the way once we get around the poles. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we're going to live for, right? Yeah. Three days later. I wish it was that quick. No, oh, here you go. Is that good enough? Yeah, that's fine. Well, right, we've got a one piece floor pan, and it did come with our paint uh, box, right?
Well, there you have it, guys. Uh, test fit of that sheet metal. I'm going to call that a win. What do you think? I like it. I like it. Well, well, since our sheet metal fits so well, we decided to take it all off and go in here and weld in the what support? Transition pan. Transition pan. Yes, I welded that in and already got the primer on them welds. And there was a box in the floorboard, which I knew that we had the pans for the seats, but I did not know that we had the upper box supports. Yeah, for the rear. So we cut the old ones off, went in there, done some clean up. These look pretty good. Uh, there was a dead space here, so we run some weld here to fill that in. That was a factory dead spot. But any little thing like that to strengthen it up works well. We've got the uh, weld through primer sprayed, so we're going to let them dry. And then we'll get these new uh, upper torque boxes welded in. That was cool they came with that. Now next is we have the floor support. We've got it there, all of our measurements down pat. We're going to go ahead and get it welded in next. What'd you say? <laughs> Alright, here we go. Yeah, we got uh, got them welded in there. Yeah, it turned out nice. What we did, we drill holes and welded through the bottom for a better look. If they fit good, that's 100% done. And that's 100% done. I know to y'all that may look off, but no, that's exactly where it needs to be. We don't care for measuring, and a level was involved. So, yeah, that's it. So, that's where we're sitting so far. Hopefully the big parts come in tomorrow. Uh, if not, we can do some more test fitting on that stuff. Well, we're going to do test fitting on that even if the big parts come in anyway. So. Yeah, that's true. That's what y'all get to see. Well, to y'all it'll be like two seconds. To us, it's a whole day. Yeah, so uh, we're going to call it a day for today. Like Casey said, it'll be a second and half a millisecond for y'all. And uh, we'll get back on it tomorrow. All right, guys. Here's where we're at. Of course, you've seen us get all that framework done, including the, all the torque boxes, not the front ones. Then we'll come later. So what we did, we went ahead and uh, throwed all of our sheet metal back up here with some bolts and nuts, along with some sheet metal screws holding everything where we believe that it needs to go. Went ahead and dropped the uh, fuel tank in just to make sure everything's lined up, that that square wasn't out of square. And all of that looks good. We have the bottom of the cowl, and the reason I'm going to put this up here, because when our side panels go up, they meet here. So this is going to help us get everything in alignment. Uh, seat boxes we got sitting, we're going to look at them a little more before we weld them bad boys in. But all in all, I mean, for a week's work, I, I mean, I think we got a lot done. What do you think, Coach? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we done really well. Like I say now, it's just uh, waiting on parts. Hopefully they'll be here Monday. And uh, we can start getting this thing all put together. But uh, yeah, so far, so good. Well, everyone, appreciate you watching the video. I hope y'all enjoyed. Uh, actually, we did. This, I know this is a lot of manual labor, but for us, this is fun work. And I mean, it's just like putting together a giant puzzle. And you better not be yay much off. You better have it on the money. But yeah, so far so good. Uh, again, hope y'all enjoyed. Maybe some of y'all learned a little something. Who knows? Well, again, appreciate you watching. If you would, throw us down some comments. Uh, if you're able, hit us up on the super thanks below. And please, like, share, and subscribe. Tell everybody about the channel. And let's get this thing really rocking. It'd be much appreciated. Again, appreciate it. Until the next one, we hope that everyone has a fantastic day.